up? My name is Deja. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, hey, thanks for stopping by. Do you guys remember last month when I uploaded a video um, about the music of 2017? So I'm going to be making that into a series on my channel. Yay! For those of you who enjoyed it, here you go. I'm going to be doing a series where I do each month of the year. So starting with January, I'm going to be going through all the music that I found that was really great and that I personally loved. And I'll be doing the same with February, March, all the way to December. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a breakdown of the beats of January of 2018. But before we get on down to today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much, you guys. Also, don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every single week. Also, click the bell so you don't miss out whenever I post. And if you want, you can follow me on all my social media. All right, let's get started. Y'all, listen, January 3rd, the world was blessed with the Finesse remix by Bruno Mars featuring my girl, Cardi B. I was so freaking excited when I saw that this was going to happen. When I first saw it, it was a retweet from Tyler Oakley and I didn't think it was really serious, but then I saw other tweets coming in and I was so excited I could not stand it because I love Bruno Mars, I love Cardi B, and 24 Karat Magic was such a good album, and Finesse was one of my favorite songs along with Chunky and Versace on the floor. So I was really, really excited to see how it was gonna turn out. Now the video, oh my gosh, it was so nostalgic, it was so cool. Literally, when I tell you guys the first two seconds of the video, I knew exactly who the video was dedicated to. I screamed. <laughs> In Living Color is such an amazing, amazing show. If I can compare it to anything, it could, it would be like Saturday Night Live, but like more of a black cast. And it was such a great show. And if you've never seen it, I really encourage you guys to go give it a look. It's an amazing show, and it's one of Bruno's favorites, which is why he dedicated the video to In Living Color. So Finesse by Bruno Mars with Cardi B was definitely at the top of my list. At this point, my edges just don't exist. And then all of a sudden, I just get a Twitter notification saying that Kendrick Lamar and SZA have a song together. All the stars on the Black Panther soundtrack. <laughs> are you kidding? Where, what are edges? Like, I'm scalped at this point. Wow. I literally was way, way too excited when I saw that SZA and Kendrick were going to do a song together. And especially for Black Panther, like, it makes sense. Black excellence, come on. And now I'm like really excited to see who all is gonna be on the album. But I listen to this song religiously. It is so good. It's like, it's so like calm but at the same time it's like fierce, if I can, if that makes sense. It's such a good song. And I just, I just, oh, it's just so good. I'm just such a fan. And I'm really, really excited to see how the rest of the soundtrack is gonna, you know, come together. And hopefully we'll see more black faces. And right when I thought that my edges could not suffer anymore, the king of the gays, Troy Sivan, my baby, he dropped my, my, my out of nowhere. And I, I literally, if I had any more hair, it would be gone as well. Such a good song. And so is The Good Side. The Good Side is such a cute song. And I'm really excited to see the rest of this album. I am so anxious and I'm very impatient. I just, I need this album now. Troy, you can't, please don't make me wait like you did with Blue Neighborhood. That was an amazing album and that was 2016. We're in 2018. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need more substance, baby. I love you, but hurry up. Thanks! Speaking of another bop, <laughs> My dude, Chase Atlantic, have a song with Dwayne Jackson called Adios, and it is a bop. Listen, all these songs, I'm just gonna call them bops because they really are. They're so good. I freaking love the song. It's something that I can get, like, I can work out to and, like, get really aggressive and just, like, work my hardest on. It's such a good song, and I'm really, really excited to see what Chase Atlantic does for this year. I know they're gonna kill it per usual, but I'm just really happy that they're starting off on a great note. Now we're gonna get a little more sultry with my girl Julia Michaels. She has a new song called Heaven off of the Fifty Shades Freed soundtrack. I was a fan of Julia Michaels ever since she dropped Issues. I have been loving her music. I love Uh Huh, I love I Miss You, Reaching Clean Bandit. I think she's such a talented musician. I think she has a lovely voice. So when Heaven dropped, I was a little bit skeptical because I was like, hmm, Fifty Shades Free. Those movies make me cringe. So I'm just wondering, you know, why is someone who doesn't make me cringe? Part of something that makes me cringe, but I listened to it. That's a sexy song, guys. It's a hot song. There's one part of the song where it's like, um, good boys go to heaven, but bad boys take you to heaven. And I'm like, really, sis? <laughs> really, sis? Tell 
tell me more, please. Do bad boys take me to heaven? Really? That's what we're doing? All right, I see you, sis. <laughs> I'll take my coins if I had any. I really do want to talk about Mike Shinoda's um, EP called Post Traumatic. If you guys don't know, Mike Shinoda is um, the founder of Fort Minor and also the founder of Lincoln Park. And you guys are well aware that in July 2017, Chester Bennington, lead singer of Lincoln Park, took his own life. And ever since then, um, it's been kind of like up in the air as to, you know, the fate of Lincoln Park. But I was watching on Twitter, you know, Mike's activities, and he was basically saying that he's not giving up on Lincoln Park, but he will be doing more side projects. And that's exactly what he did with his EP, Post Traumatic. Post Traumatic has three songs on it, and they're called Over Again, Watching As I Fall, and Place to Start. So I listened to the entire EP in one sitting, and I definitely have to say that, Mike, this is like, it was very hard to listen to. What I thought was really interesting about Place to Start was that Mike included clips of family and friends calling and checking up on him, considering, you know, what had happened. And I thought that was really interesting and very personal of him. So with Mike's song um, over again, you got a chance to listen to all of his internal thoughts that he was going through um, the day of the Chester Bennington um, tribute show. And I thought that that was very interesting how he worded everything. He said that he didn't think he would have to get back on stage so soon, that he felt like he was going to throw up, and that he almost lost it at so many of the songs, and how he felt like, uh, you know, doing this show would give him a sense of closure, but he hasn't gotten that. And just the whole EP in its entirety, again, it was really hard to listen to, but I think Mike did an amazing job. He also put visuals out for each of the songs, which I haven't personally seen, but I will be seeing later on. Mike Shinoda's EP, Post Traumatic, definitely give it a listen. I think you guys will get a better understanding of exactly what Mike is going through, because he makes it very clear. He is very passionate about it, and I really do commend him for doing that. Now, the next album to really catch my eye and an album that I wasn't expecting to see was Poet Artist by Kim jong Yun of Shiny. And if you guys aren't well aware, um, Kim jong Yun is a very popular K-pop artist who was a part of the group Shiny for a very long time. So the whole entire world was absolutely shocked when he committed suicide in December of 2017. So, um, me personally, I grew up listening to a lot of K-pop, and you can't really talk about K-pop without talking about Shiny, more specifically Kim jong Yun, because he was such, like, an untouchable talent. He was just unbelievable, and he was, his vocals were amazing, he was very handsome. So, poet, artist, is a very, very emotional album. I would definitely say that. It was a lot to digest. It was hard to listen to at some points. Um, some of my favorite songs were um, Hashtag, Shining, and Before Our Spring. Before Our Spring had me in tears. Like, when I listen to it, it makes me so, so sad. Because the song is just basically about, like, from the sound of it, he's basically saying that he knows how everything's going to end and he's just telling other people before this happens i just want you to know that i'm content and that i'm okay so i just it was it was very very hard to listen to and it makes me so upset that i like i'm such a fan of him now considering what happened it just makes me very upset because i would love to have told him you know your album is amazing and it's wonderful but um yeah kim jong Yun's poet artist is definitely a really good album if you guys aren't familiar with k-pop um you know, if you have an open mind, then definitely, definitely give it a listen, especially Poet Artist. Um, look up the English translation, you'll understand it more and you'll learn to appreciate it more. But yeah, that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Also, do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos every single week. Also, click the bell so you don't miss out whenever I post. And if you want to follow me on all my social media, they will all be down below. Also, down below will be all the artists that I mentioned in today's video, so you guys can go listen for yourself and support their music. And until I see you guys again next time, I will catch you on the flip side. Bye, guys! <laughs>